Uh, the host has to allow me for screen sharing. Yes, Shruti, just a minute. Yes. Okay, so I was talking about the use of cane um, to offload the uh, joint. Now what happens in uh, hip abductor, uh, so this hip abductor weakness, there is lurch, okay? Suppose this person is using uh, a cane on uh, the contralateral side, that is on the right side. What is going to happen? Okay, whenever you use a cane, the... Uh, the head, this is HAT, that is the head, arm and trunk pate that is going down through the, through the LOG, okay? So usually this has to be counteracted by the hip abductor muscle contraction. But in case the hip abductor muscles are weak and in case you hold a cane, this uh, LOG is counteracted by latissimus dorsi muscle, okay? Why? Because when you hold a cane and when you push it down, while walking, when you wait, put some weight on the cane, there is uh, activation of the latissimus dorsi muscle uh, because of, by the virtue of its action. And therefore, uh, it is uh, this is counteracted by the uh, latissimus dorsi muscle and therefore the trunk lean uh, goes away and also the there is no uh, load that is coming on the medial knee joint. Plus, taking a cane also takes away the demand uh, by the hip abductor muscles to contract. So this is a very great uh, method. You, uh, we all should always uh, give our patients a cane in case there is a lot of uh, lurching side-to-side -side swaying that is happening in OA knee patients. Because this can help in uh, reducing the medial knee, like offload the medial knee, plus it uh, takes away the demand of hip abductors to contract to maintain the pelvic alignment while walking. Now, uh, the third thing is hip up, uh, muscle strengthening, the hip abductor muscle strengthening. So, uh, as I already explained about the other thing, if you see uh, this diagram, all right, whenever the hip abductors are weak and when you are taking stance on the limb, the pelvis is bound to tilt on the opposite side. So, if uh, hip abductor enough hip up, and the KAM increases, if you see here. Uh, what I have been always, uh, since a while I have been talking about KAM, which is the knee adduction moment. Just look at this, uh, when the hip is neutral, the knee adduction moment is, the uh, measure of it is very less. But when the uh, pelvis tilts and when the body lurches on the uh, opposite side, so the GRF goes through that, in case the patient is not using compensatory mechanism, the GRF goes more medially, and therefore, the measure of KAM increases. So, if hip abductor strengthening is given, if hip abductors are strong enough to maintain the pelvis pelvic alignment, then the, we can control the KAM and therefore uh, cause less uh, loading at the medial knee joint. Coming back to what we discussed, we discussed offloading the medial compartment. Okay, so again, now I think you all can relate to the logic that I said to manipulate uh, the magnitude of GRF and reduce its external layer arm and hence reduce KAM and medial compartmental compressive loads. Okay, by the use of contralateral cane, you, uh, contralateral cane and muscle strengthening, which is a hip abductor muscle. Head modification is something that patients do there by themselves, but it is not advisable because uh, the patients can land up having back pain or SI joint pain. Okay. The second thing which we can do to offload the me, uh, to basically correct the varus malalignment is uh, by use of braces and footwear. Now these are these kind of many braces are available which work on three point principle. These orthoses. All right. So suppose this uh, this knee had to go into a varus malalignment. It could look it would look something like this. Okay. So the three point pressure is. It is putting um, lateral pressure on the thigh, 
lateral pressure just below the knee and medial pressure which is a valgus moment at the knee joint if you see uh, on the leg when the brace is worn it works like this it puts a valgus moment and therefore helps in correction or uh, halting the progression of varus malalignment okay now uh, the second thing is uh, use of lateral uh, lateral foot raise okay lateral heel raise sorry so uh, basically using uh, lateral wedge when uh, so if you go if you go back to this we are on the second point where we are uh, we have done with braces and now we are on footwear modification so whenever what happens when you use the lateral wedge again we are manipulating the grf we are not doing anything else okay so what happens is uh, this is normally in case of genu varum the grf is going medially all right and the, there is uh, the this is a camp uh, knee adduction moment which is really uh, long okay the distance is more and now uh, when you use the lateral wedge what happens is the grf comes closer and therefore there is uh, the cam is reduced and there is reduced varus angle so basically you can uh, do the uh, uh, the footwear modification by giving a lateral wedge and help in reducing or controlling the varus malalignment okay now these are different kind of uh, wedges that are available these are uh, just heel wedges that cover only the heels then there are full length uh, wedges where uh, which cover the full uh, length of the foot and these are lateral wedges uh, with arch support in case somebody is also uh, showing you pronated foot so these kind of wedges can be used wherein uh, they have they also uh, get arch support uh, shoe insoles uh, Uh, the show that shoe insoles with a wedged incline along the outside um, have been effect, uh, been effective in reducing the KAM by fifteen percent. Now, what happens uh, when fifteen uh, percent every time you walk? So, this reduction in KAM over a period of time can be clinically meaningful in mitigating symptoms and reducing the risk of structural disease progression. So, we don't want the OA to progress, and this is a great way uh, to halt the progress. So it is just fifteen percent reduction in cam by giving heel wedges, but over a period of time, it is it can give you very clinically meaningful results. Then uh, also studies have also shown that full length lateral wedge reduces uh, cam more as compared to only heel wedge insole. So uh, full wedge insoles are uh, more beneficial as compared to heel wedges, the ones that are covering only the heels. Okay. Now, uh, so we are uh, taking you back to the initial questions that we had. So we are done with two things. We know now that hip muscles are important in ONEs; they are seen to be weak. And the second thing we know is that varus malalignment. Why is varus malalignment more prevalent than valgus malalignment in ONEs? And what are the ways we can control that and we can uh, halt the progression? now the third thing we'll come to which is that is there any relationship between the frontal plane malalignment of knee like genu varum that we have been talking about and frontal plane muscles like hip abductors so we'll uh, i'll take you through a study yeah so yes there is definitely as you all must have guessed there is definitely a relationship between a uh, frontal plane malalignment of knee like genu varum and frontal plane muscle like hip abductor muscles okay now uh, uh, this study which uh, uh, whose title is uh, can trendlinburg sign be positive if the hip is normal gives us a great uh, idea about this relationship now what this study has done is basically the authors uh this is an indian study and uh, the authors of this study they have basically uh, tried to uh, evaluate um, so basically what they have done is they saw a patient a pediatric patient who had this amount of genu varum this uh, bowing of legs and he showed trendlinburg's positive he showed trendlinburg's gait all right then they did osteotomies and then they did a uh, deformity correction and brought the alignment back to normal and the trendlinburg's gait disappeared it it was abolished so they thought 
that when genuvarum was present the tenlenburg gate was present and when the genuvarum had gone away the tenlenburg gate also went away so what is that missing link basically so they tried to research and therefore the title can tenlenburg sign be positive if the hip is normal because this deformity is at knee not at the hips and still the hips are normal and still um, the tenlenburg sign is positive so what is it okay to understand that i'll uh, take you through some basics okay first of all let let us understand what is an anatomical axis of lower limb and what is a, a mechanical axis of lower limb so anatomical axis of femur is different from the mechanical axis but for tibia both are same okay now for femur the anatomical axis extends from the piriformis fossa to the center of the knee joint okay this is the anatomical axis because of its position its placement in the thigh the mechanical axis and the, and for tibia it is from the center of tibia to the center of mortise so it is same now coming to the mechanical axis mechanical axis is from the tip of the head of the femur to uh, the uh, center of the mortise this is the mechanical axis of the leg and uh, what happens with deformity when you, when the limb goes into a genu valgum deformity the mechanical axis shifts to the lateral shifts lateral on the outside of the knee and when the limb goes into genu valgum deformity the mechanical axis shifts medial all right it shifts inside uh, to the inside of the uh, knee joint so now what happens is uh, in genu valgum hip is uh, first of all we need to understand that our hip joint is the only joint in the lower limb that allows great degree of abduction adduction i'm sure you all will agree to this okay so now what happens if there is any valgus or varus at the knee joint it has to be compensated either at hip or at ankle now we know that ankle cannot give a huge degree of abduction adduction so the suppose we consider varus deformity so if if there is varus deformity at the knee joint it has to be compensated at the hip joint and how is it going to be compensated by placing the femur in an abducted position i hope this is clear to everyone so hip adopts an abducted position to maintain a straight mechanical axis while walking because eventually we have to maintain a straight mechanical axis so whenever there is genu varum at the knee the hip automatically goes into an abducted position to maintain the straight mechanical axis of the limb while walking all right so because uh, so now what happens is this brings because so this is if you see the this diagram the trochanter uh, which is the greater trochanter which is the point of insertion of hip abductors it is brought very uh, close to its origin which is the uh, this part of the hip bone the ilium part of the hip bone so uh, the origin and insertion of hip abductors are brought very close to each other when the hip abductors are placed in an uh, when i'm so sorry when the hip is placed in an abducted position all right so because of this it shortens and weakens the hip abductor muscles so even though uh, when we don't have any pathology of the hip abductor muscle the hip abductors are absolutely fine but because of this placement of the hip in an abducted position it goes the hip abductors they go into a position of mechanical disadvantage all right look at this diagram hip abductor these are hip abductors hanging from the origin to the neutral hip and these are hip abductors when the hip is in abduction due to the varus malalignment so they go into a position of mechanical disadvantage now what we need to know is this see the abductors are physiologically designed to work in a neutral or slightly abducted hip wherein if you keep the limb in adduction the length of the abductors is good enough to generate a good amount of contraction but uh, but what happens is uh, so the isometric abduction torque in neutral hip position is 82% greater than the abduction torque when the hip is in even in 25 degrees of abduction why because of shortened abductors so the length of the abductors is affected by this position and therefore uh it goes into a mechanical uh, disadvantage all right okay so uh, therefore tendlenburg sign is also seen in the gait uh, with genuvarum deformity coming back to this uh, question 
can trendlinburg sign be positive if the hip is normal yes it can be positive why if there is genuvarum deformity at the knee joint it it uh, renders uh, hip abductors weak shortened and therefore uh, leads to trendlinburg sign even if the abductors are not weak and over a period of time the abductors become weak because they are not being used all right now uh, coming to the question can hip muscle strengthening have positive outcome in oa knees yes it can so this was a study done wherein uh, they had checked the same thing whether hip muscle strengthening can have a positive outcome of oa knee they had checked two things one is uh, the outcome on pain and function and second thing is they had checked is uh, the load knee load what they found found out was it reduces symptoms okay it gives a good improvement in pain and function of the patient but it, but not the knee load in pay, people with medial knee osteoarthritis and varus malalignment all right so let's look into details of the findings of the study what they say is hip strengthening had no significant effect on external km like in their study they couldn't find any significant effect on km the km did not reduce okay but hip strengthening uh, did lead to significant improvement in pain and physical function now why is it so because we have been reading so much we have been discussing so much about the cam we have been discussing that hip abductor strengthening can help in reducing the cam then why are they saying so why is it so because um uh, they uh, when whenever when they gave uh, hip muscle strengthening they also gave hip abductor strengthening and because of the hip abductor strengthening program uh, they they saw reduction in the lateral leaning while walking the lateral trunk lean had improved that is what this point explains okay explained by small but significant decrease in the lateral trunk lean which is associated with pelvic drop with hip strengthening program which was consistent with the improvements in the hip abductor strength now what happens so whenever there uh, there is reduction in the lateral trunk lean it increases the knee adduction moment let me take you back to the diagram to explain this whenever the patient i'm so sorry yeah so whenever the patient is leaning uh, laterally uh, it uh, is going to decrease the cam this is if you remember the second point gait modification this is what is adapted by the patients okay to uh, reduce to offload the medial knee lateral trunk lean okay when the patient starts walking straight okay he stops leaning laterally is he going to increase the km yes he is going to increase the cam this was a strategy to reduce cam okay so when they were measuring cam they did not find any difference in the cam all right so this could be a probable explanation because their gait had improved because of your abductor strengthening that is why they couldn't find any improvement in the cam so that does not mean that there was no difference in the knee load we don't know because the uh, thing which we used to measure the knee load that is the knee adduction moment did not show any difference so reduced trunk lean is known to increase the knee adduction moment hence uh, direct effects of improved hip strength on knee adduction moment may have cancelled out by reduction in compensatory lateral trunk lean what i just explained here okay now we got diverted from my study let's get back to my study i'll not take much time and i'll just uh, give a brief idea about what my study was so i hope that uh, knowing all the other uh, concepts about uh, hip abductor muscles knee osteoarthritis and genuvarum now i feel like it will be easier for you all to understand about my study okay the background i'll just uh, say hip muscle weakness exists in patients with oenis as we saw researchers on that it is important to study the effects of varus malalignment on the hip abductor strength and secondly hip abductors as we know play a very important role in stabilizing the pelvis on hip joint in frontal plane thus their weakness can compromise the normal gait pattern now what was the aim and objective of my study to compare the hip abductor muscle strength in patients having genuvarum deformity to those having normal knee alignment to see if they are weak and if they are weak to what extent they are weak in individuals with oa knees okay 
now uh, this is how the sample was collected basically i had taken uh, both uh, suppose the patients came with unilateral affection i had considered them patient came with bilateral affection i had considered them as well i had considered both knees in my subject so this is how if the patient came with unilateral affection they could have normal alignment they could have genuarum both were considered so this is the number of patients uh, that belong to that category so in all uh, i had assessed total uh, 106 knees uh, knees with genuarum were 68 and knees with normal alignment were 38 all right now these uh, assessment details so what i had done was uh, for assessment uh, i had divided the patients into two categories the ones having genuarum ones having normal knee alignment so if you all remember uh, if i talk about the angle the this this is how i measured the alignment angle on x ray okay and uh, the medial angle was measured so if the medial angle was in between 180 degree to 187 degree i had considered them as normal alignment and if the uh, angle was less than uh, uh, 180 degrees uh, they were put into the category of genuarum alignment so this is how i assessed for the alignment angle then uh, this is uh, how i assessed for the hip abductor isometric strength um isometric hip abductor strength measurement by handheld dynamometer and uh, also there was one more uh, outcome which is observational video gait analysis so i had taken videos of patient in frontal plane uh, and i had done observational gait analysis just to figure out the uh, whether they uh, showed trendelenburg's gait uh so this is the demographic data now we don't go need to go into the details except for the fact which i would like to show is uh, that uh, if you look into the bmi uh, bmi uh, in genuarum group was higher as compared to without genuarum which is normal alignment group okay then uh, if you see the grading uh, the grade 3 uh, and 4 uh, of oa knee were seen more grade 2 but grade 3 4 oa never seen more with genuarum uh, mal alignment and there were zero cases of grade 3 and 4 in normal alignment group okay so which which also explains that genu the de deformity uh, like if you have arm deformity the high chances of to higher grades right so uh, the following tests were used to derive the results comparison of hip abductor strength between two groups was done by man whitney u test correlation between hip abductor strength and knee alignment angles was done by pearson's correlation and association between genuarum and trendelenburg gait was done using chi square test so as you can see i had done three things uh, in my analysis first is i compared the hip abductor strength between the two groups uh, with genuarum and with normal alignment and what is the difference next what i did was correlation between the hip abductor uh, strength and knee alignment angles are they correlated what is it the positive negative correlation what is it and third thing what i saw was uh, if there is any association between genuarum and trendelenburg in oa knees okay now uh, if you see this chart uh this shows a significant difference the p value it is 0.009 which is significantly different so if you can see the strength is higher of hip abductor muscles in genuarum group and the strength is lower in um uh, sorry the strength is higher in without genuarum group the mean strength is lower in with genuarum group this graph shows the same thing the blue shows genuarum group and orange shows normal alignment group This is the strength of hip abductors that I got in normal alignment group, and this is what I got in the genuarum group. Now this chart shows the correlation between hip abductor strength and knee alignment angles. Okay, so uh, as if you can see on the left hand side, this is the angle which is given. Considering uh, the normal values that I told you, less than one eighty is genuarum, and more than one eighty uh, is one eighty to one eighty seven is normal. so as the angle go went on increasing the hip abductor strength went on increasing if you all can see this is the strength hip abductor strength which shows that with lower angles the strength was less so this proves that there is 
you know a correlation exist between hip abductor strength and knee alignment angles as in when uh, the more is the varus deformity weaker are the hip abductors now this is the association between presence absence of genuvarum and positive negative trendlinburg's gate now if you all uh, closely look at the figures here so um, the patients that showed trendlinburg's gate positive and uh, uh, the patients in the genuvarum group that showed trendlinburg's gate positive were 81% of the total 100% of the genuvarum group and 19% showed it negative that is absent then in the normal alignment group 37% showed it positive and 63% showed it negative okay so which shows that higher uh, category of people from the genuvarum group showed trendlinburg's gate present and low uh, lower uh, population showed it absent and in normal alignment group higher uh, population higher number of population showed it absent and less number of people showed it present so now what do we uh, conclude from okay so these figures are clear the this the majority of population figures are clear but how do we justify these figures the smaller number of figures so the pa uh, patients that belong to genuvarum group which showed uh, which showed uh, trendlinburg's gate uh, negative uh hello uh it's showing some notification that my internet has stopped should we go here you okay 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 ma'am all right so uh, yeah, there were people in genu varum group which showed trendlinburg's gate absent so when i went back to the uh, master chart uh, The, these patients, majority, uh, majority of these patients, they belong to grade two OA, grade two of OA. Uh, and as we know, grade two OA does not show a significant amount, a significant uh, genuvarum deformity. So these were those patients which showed grade two OA. All right. And coming to this figure, in which a smaller uh, number of people showed Trendelenburg's gate positive. Now these could be. Uh, the patients with normal alignment and in initial stages of OA, okay, which due uh, these are those patients uh, that could be uh, they could be uh, adapting to compensatory gait mechanism due to the pain in the knee. So whenever there is pain in uh, pain in the knee, in order to offload the medial joint, they uh, the patients resort uh, to lurching uh, and you know compensatory uh, lateral leaning of the trunk as a compensatory gait mechanism. So these could be those patients which showed Trendelenburg's gait positive, like they showed side to side swaying while walking, but uh, they, that was not necessarily due to hip abductor weakness. So this graph shows the same thing which I explained y'all. All right. So in a uh, genuvarum group, higher number of people showed uh, Trendelenburg sign positive, and uh, that is present, and lower number absent. And in normal alignment group, it was opposite. Lower number of people showed it positive, and higher number showed it absent. So the conclusion of my study was that the hip abductor strength in patients with genuvarum was uh, less as compared to patients with normal knee alignment. And second thing is an association exists that we saw between positive Trendelenburg gait and genuvarum deformity. All this applicable to OA knee patients. Now, what are the clinical implications of my study? First of all, this study establishes a theoretical basis of hip abductor muscle weakness in genuvarum in patients having OA needs, and we already know the theoretical basis. Second is emphasis has to be given to hip abductor muscle strengthening into rehabilitation programs of OA needs. Third important thing is uh, before explaining that I would like to give you all an example. So consider a patient who is opted for uh, total knee arthroplasty. All right. He is having significant genuvarum deformity and is having a waddling gait, totally waddling gait. After a correction of the deformity, and uh, even after uh, after the correction of the deformity post TKR, the patient still shows waddling gait. So what is it that is the missing link? It is the hip abductor muscle weakness. Okay. So preoperatively, if we can focus on hip abductor muscle strengthening. Uh, especially for patients going uh, total knee arthroplasty, they can show better outcomes in terms of gait pattern post-operatively. 
so that is the end of uh, my presentation for today uh, last thing i would like to say is that it is very important uh, to be curious never stop questioning because curiosity has its own reason for existing as uh, the great albert einstein has said and always be curious thank you hello uh, yes thank you shruti for this uh, lovely session uh, i just have one question uh, yes ma'am yeah so you were more focusing on the tibio femoral oa so in your study have you uh, uh, taken into consideration the patella femoral uh, part of oa me that patella femoral uh. pain syndrome yes ma'am so no ma'am because uh, the primary objective of the study was to measure was to know if the hip abductor muscles become weak uh, due to the genuarum deformity and uh, the genuarum deformity is mainly uh, at the uh, at the tibio femoral uh, joint um, like the patello femoral joint is affected but uh, it uh, like it it gets affected because of genuarum deformity but it is not involved in the deformity in forming the deformity so i have not uh, taken into account the patero femoral joint okay because uh, as you were discussing initially you said uh, you got few study which says that uh, hip abductor weakness doesn't give rise to oe but there is less evidence but right. uh, hip abductor weakness is more likely to develop patello femoral pain syndrome so most of the patients okay. who comes maybe in grade 1 Uh, or grade two OA, they can be more complaining of anterior knee pain rather than medial uh, knee joint pain. So it can be possible okay. that uh, weak abductors is causing yes. because uh, because abductors are usually they uh, when you are walking, uh, it maintains mm. the eccentric control. So the uh, hip adduction and hip internal rotation basically is prevented. Yeah. So they are eccentrically right. controlling that. So when they are weak. the there is excessive hip internal rotation and hip adduction which causes right. increase in the uh, compression of the patella femoral uh, joint especially the sent, uh, the lateral facet and which can later right. on cause patella femoral pain so like mm -hmm. that also to patella femoral joint also it is related hip abductor weakness along right, with right. Like what you discussed yeah yes very yes. nice session and very nice study done shruti Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else so has much. any questions? Can I ask a question? If that's okay, ma'am. Yes, sir. Sure. sure. Yeah. So you know, one uh, absolutely brilliant presentation, and it, this is something I haven't heard, or you know, it sort of challenged so many of my existing concepts because it does make sense because you do get patients, you know, because they. you give them because knee art osteoarthritis your first line of action is to give them the a cane on their affected side but sometimes there are some patients in which we have to give canes on the opposite side for knee osteoarthritis and that does make, uh, make a difference so very good presentation i would say a bold study but uh, yeah just Thank one you, simple question yeah so just one simple question uh, which hip are you considering because if you look at the hip mechanics at such you know if you look at it it's the opposite adductors abductors of the hip opposite abductors you know i'm i'm talking from a purely sports perspective gait biomechanics and everything else which you did touch mm -hmm. on so that was brilliant but the opposite the contralateral hip the abductors they influence mm -hmm. the ipsilateral knee side and it's 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 vice versa with the you know if you look at the mechanics right. the gait biomechanics and everything like that uh and yeah did that find did you find any such correlation with the opposite hip as well because obviously you know you, what you did was i what what i got from your presentation was that you are strengthening the same side hip abductors now that's going to influence the knee genuarum and the knee mechanics right. on the same side right. but uh did you sort of have a look around for you know if the opposite side also made a difference because in uh, sorry to the the digress a bit in my clinical practice i've seen the opposite side is very notorious to cause all these problems on the same side you know similar to what even sort of i agree with it 
uh, with even uh, with uh, ma'am, you know, she said, you know, in that case, you know, with that adduction talks and everything like that, the opposite side is also notorious. Have you noted anything like that? Just curious, just asking a question. I'm not trying to put my mm. words into your mouth, but just asking question. Yeah. Uh, no, sir, I haven't come across and uh, it's uh, really a good question and I'll think on it, but uh, in my study or in the entire thing, if, when I was looking through the literatures, I've never yeah. come across anything that is mentioning about the opposite side. Like uh, okay. in even in the gate biomechanics or anything, Whenever you are in the stance phase, it is always on the uh, the side of the limb which is uh, weight bearing. That side of the abductors are in action to prevent the opposite side pelvis drop, pelvic drop. So it is always the ipsilateral side that I have uh, read about. So okay, yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Yeah, yeah thank you, sir. Both years and second years who are attending, if you have any questions, you can please go ahead. I do not have any questions to ask, but I would just like to make a comment. Is it all right, Sati? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma sure, sure. This is Anna, ma'am. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm very good, good study. Very good study that you have done. And I think you thank have you. answered quite a few questions. But uh, you said one of the options was to give a cane in the opposite hand. Right? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes. Have you advised and how many people have taken up your advice of using a cane in the opposite hand? Uh, ma'am, I have always come uh, across patients who are uh, not very willing to use the cane. Exactly. To be exactly. very honest. Absolutely. This is what even I have dealt with. Even trying to uh, convey this to our own relatives or our own friends, telling them that it will be better, it's not acceptable to them socially. Right, right. So it becomes very difficult to tell them you take a cane and your knee will not progress further, worse and further. Right, correct. But so uh, yeah, but this is the uh, this is the mechanics which it works with. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I understand that. I'm not saying no to what you're saying. But yes, yes. I think the yes. education regarding this is more because it will help us to reduce the amount of surgeries people go for. Yes, correct. Surgery is very expensive, very painful. And if you can prevent it just by using a cane in the opposite hand, I would go for it. I don't know about others. <laughs> True, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, so it was really nice to hear so confidently you spoke about uh, what you had done because I know you must have uh, really delved into all the matter which was there uh, regarding it and uh, i just want to make one comment you spoke as though you owned the whole thing so that is what i would expect all our other postgraduate students to thank you so much ma'am thank you very much 